War can be fought for many reasons. The men of the Empire fight for survival against the endless dangers of the Warhammer world. The warriors of Chaos engage in it to prove themselves to their dark masters. The savage greenskins of the Badlands wage it for the simple pleasure of a good scrap. For some, however, war is a chance to practice and refine their skills with blade and bow. These individuals view the flight of an expertly shot arrow or a perfectly placed sword blow as goals in unto themselves. If such a person is an elf, they can find themselves a divine patron in Eldrazor, Lord of Blades. Eldrazor is an odd deity. Despite being the elven god of duelists and honorable warriors, he is a member of the sinister Sathari pantheon, along the likes of Cain and Arith Kial. He despises mindless barbarism and needless violence, yet his worship is focused around specially made arenas of death where any type of battle is allowed. It should perhaps be no surprise then that these contradictions have not made him a popular god among most of the elven subcultures. High elves stay away from him for the most part, not comfortable worshipping at the altar of even the most benevolent Sathari. The Dark Elves find Eldrazor's distaste for honorless combat off-putting, though there are some notable exceptions to this. It is for these reasons that he is often considered the forgotten member of the Elven Pantheon. Only the Wood Elves worship him with any regularity, as Athalorin's eternal guard seek his favor before battles and duels. When courting Eldrazor's favor, Eternal Guard will create cross dagger pendants and fingerbone totems. They will then use these to consecrate parts of the forest in Eldrazor's name, turning them into mortal extensions of his arena of death. It is said that Eldrazor carefully watches battles occurring in these spaces, and might even intervene if moved to do so. Eternal Guard will plan the defense of the great forest around these consecrated sites, as having a god fight alongside you can more than compensate for being outnumbered. As previously mentioned, Eldrazor is not highly venerated in Dark Elf society. There is one, very important, exception to this rule, however. The Sisters of Slaughter, the most powerful gladiatorial guild in Nagaroth, offers every battle to the Lord of Blades. Initially a group of disgraced noble daughters, they pledged their lives to Eldrazor so he might bless their quest for vengeance against those who betrayed them. This worked out very well for both parties. Under his tutelage, the sisters became exceptionally deadly with any weapon they laid their hands on, capable of deflecting even the most vicious attacks while dealing out devastating blows of their own. They got their vengeance and became feared gladiators, while Eldrazor has grown in strength with the sisters' ascension. The rest of the elven pantheon anxiously awaits to see what this change in the balance of power might mean for the rest of them. That concludes our overview of Eldrazor, one of the more puzzling members of the Sathari pantheon. Not quite a benevolent deity, but by the same token, not exactly malevolent. You would think a god of war would have more of an impact on elven culture, but I guess not. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment stuff down below to appease a much more powerful god than Eldrazor, the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you want to hang out with some of the fine people who watch these videos, I've recently set up a Discord for the community. The link should be in the description down below, so come and join us if you want to. Until next time, this has been Sigmar's Chosen, signing off for now.